Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me James. Hope you guys are all doing well and we're back as we continue the story of Ark and the island map. In this little mini series we're going to be following the four survivors from the island map and in this two part episode we're discussing the survivor Sir Edmund Rockwell. He appears to be a chemist from 19th century London and his notes are written in a cursive English style. So gather around, sit back and relax and enjoy Sir Edmund Rockwell's account of what happened on the island. Greetings and salutations, dear reader. If these words are gracing your eyes, then you've had the good fortune to find the journal of Sir Edmund Rockwell, stupendous scholar, gentleman, and explorer extraordinaire. It also means that it's entirely possible that I met some unseemly end on this fascinating but extraordinarily dangerous island that I call home. I suppose you could have stolen it, or I could have misplaced it, in which case proceed either to hang your head in shame or return it to me at once. Whichever is appropriate. Regards, Sir Edmund Rockwell. The wondrous properties of flora on the island will never cease to amaze me. If I told my colleagues in London that I could create a concoction capable of erasing someone's memories, I'd be laughed out the room and never invited to tea again. Yet here it sits, my mind wiped tonic. As usual, I've had the tribal leaders groveling at the gates of Rockwell Manor just to the tiniest of samples and for the recipe. Oh, the bounties I've been offered. I'm not interested in their riches though. I have their protection, supplies for my studies and all the time in the world. What more could I ask for? These tribal negotiations give me a headache every time. The black thumbs are mad that the painted shark sunk two of their barges. But the painted sharks say that the barges were too close to the Southern Haven and they were perfectly in their rights to sink them as per Southern Island Accords. Typically, neither side is willing to budge. What a bother, I'd soon as mine wipe with a lot of them and return to my studies. Alas, such is the fate of the island's most respected natural entity, at least the painted sharks bought some fresh fish. Perhaps I'll side with them. Any chemist worth his salt knows the irreplaceable value of testing. Until a tonic has been rigorously tested, it's less useful than water. If only I could persuade the island's less intellectual inhabitants to see that tests on Mephopithecus serve very well for early trials, but no replacement for genuine human subjects at later, safer stages. By subjects, I mean of course willing participants that are prepared to risk mild headaches, and much less mild nausea for the sake of science. The Laughing Skulls offered less willing participants at one point, but I declined with how difficult it is to find volunteers these days. I sometimes regret it. Miss Walker's impromptu visits are always an unexpected pleasure. After that headache with the sharks and blackfoots, a lively tea time discussion about the abnormalities of the Ark's ecosystem was precisely what I needed. Thank goodness I've managed to find an intellectual colleague that shares my love for sciences. It saddens me to think that Miss Walker's charming colonial accent would keep her out of more prestigious institutions and societies back home. Another of Ark's wonders. It's a true meritocracy, unlike any in the modern world. If Miss Walker and I could find and cultivate more minds like ours, we could create a true scientific utopia. This expedition to the White Sky Peak has just been splendid, top to bottom. The weather's been marvellous. I found excellent floral samples and the local hunters had more woolly rhino horns than you could shake a stick at. I've even managed to find volunteers for my latest experiment. It turns out it was simply a matter of linguistics. Those who are wary of experimental potions are much more receptive to experimental food. Once my endothermic paste was rechristened via a curry, people were clamouring to taste it. It has moderate nutritional value, so it's not a technically a deception. It's just favourable language in the name of progress, that's all. Perfectly moral. Sadly, my fire a curry trials cannot begin immediately, as the volunteers have a much more difficult journey to Rockwell Manor than I. After all, I couldn't very well carry one of them on Archimedes. Yes, the Argent Tavis could clutch one in his talons, but I've always found the practice to be barbaric. The rest of Ark may be embroiled with feudal savagery, but a gentleman always maintains his class and dignity. At any rate, I must have my assistants renovate the guest compound. Naturally, I'd never let strangers into the manor proper, but there's no reason their stay should not reflect my civilised standards. Having readily available subjects has helped my experience tremendously, even if their numbers dwindled over time. 
Not only was I able to curb the side effects of my Fira Curry's endothermic properties, but I managed to bring out an additional benefit in the mixture. Now it lowers the subject's metabolism, letting them go longer without needing food. Marvellous. I hadn't even considered that as a possibility. Why, with all I've learned from these experiments, I could imagine I can reverse the effects of the Fira Curry and create a concoction to aid the survival in extreme heat as well. I must find more volunteers post haste. I decided to seek out volunteers for my next experiment among the island's larger tribes. I thought surely that they would be willing to help after I patiently moderated so many of their frivolous disputes. How idealistic of me. Instead, they have yet another favour to ask. Apparently, there's a new tribe that's behaving rather aggressively and no one can successfully negotiate with its leader, so naturally they've turned to me. It's rather bothersome, but I can't touch their logic. If Sir Edmund Rockwell cannot reason with this Nerva fellow, then who can? Well, I found the report on this Mr Nerva to be rather exaggerated. As an Englishman, one might imagine that I'd view the Roman leadership with some disdain. Yet, in my experience, I found Mr Nerva to be both honest and intellectually engaging. In fact, after a lengthy conversation, I dare say that Mr Nerva has the right of it when it comes to the island's politics. As the Romans created Pax Romans, perhaps this new legion will create Pax Arkham. Even if it doesn't, I doubt it will harm my research. So I see no reason to interfere with this pointless squabble. How can these tribal leaders be so short-sighted? Yes, the members of the representative tribes who volunteered for the Battle Tartar and Steak Sauté experiments have been experienced prolonged withdrawal episodes. Can't they see that the benefits outweigh the costs? I create mixtures that can bring out superhuman strength, speed, coordination and ordinary men and they can only focus on the negatives. Simple-minded, the lot of them. They've even banned their members from partaking in my experiments now. Ridiculous. I'll not let them stand in the way of human progress. They may not understand the importance of my work, but surely my assistants do. I've decided to take a brief vacation from my laboratory. Well, I say decided to, but the whole thing was my assistant Isabel's idea. She noticed that I'd been quite ruffled lately and suggested that I take a bit of time to myself before rushing headlong into my next experiment. Such an observant young woman, that Isabel. She's somewhat lacking as a chemist, but she understands my moods almost better than I do. I dare say that an old-fashioned adventure will do me some good. Nothing like some rigorous recreation to clear the mind. Perhaps I'll go spelunking. Yes, a splendid idea. I know just the place for it. Remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. When I chose that remote northern cave as the site for my spectacular spelunking shojin, I never imagined that I would find such wonders within. Granted, I don't know what this specific wonder does exactly, but it's fascinating to examine. Like nothing I've ever seen. I don't even recognise the materials that it's composed of, and it's constantly pulsing with some sort of latent energy. What is it? Is it unique? Are there similar artefacts just waiting to be discovered beneath the island's surface? How invigorating. Isabel was right. This is exactly what I needed. I feel like a young man again. Eureka! My theory was correct. The small podium at the base of the obelisk is definitely responding to the artifact's proximity and vice versa. Honestly, I feel foolish for not attempting this sooner. The stylistic similarities between the artifacts and the obelisks floating above the island seems obvious to me now. Clearly they were created with the same culture and era. Bizarrely, while both of these artifacts and obelisks are in exquisite condition, there's no signs of the mysterious civilization. How could that be? What kind of mad society would gallivant about on some remote island, building towering structures and stuffing knickknacks into caves before vanishing without a trace? I don't understand it, but it certainly piqued my curiosity. And that concludes part one of Rockwell's journey across the island map. We will be continuing with the explorer notes and we'll finish off Rockwell's journey in part two in the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and also leave a comment down below if you've enjoyed the read through and your thoughts on Rockwell's journey. That's all the time we've got for this episode and until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.